Hey everyone, Alyssa here for Black Cat Mambo, my paranormal journal. I uh, had made a post over on my regular journal. Actually, it was it was a video reply to someone, and we got to talking about the movie An American Haunting, which was based on the. I hope I don't say Blair Witch during this. If I say Blair Witch instead of Bell Witch, just pretend like you didn't hear it was based on the Bell Witch case, which I'm quite familiar with, and I've been fascinated by it since I was about 13 years old. That's been a long time. And I complained that the movie was, in fact, so loose, loosely based on it that it really showed very little resemblance to the original story, and that they indeed um, cut out so much of the truly, truly fascinating facts of the case and put in a lot of filler and romance stuff, which I think were completely unnecessary. So some of you asked me to please tell the true story of the Bell Witch. Now, I've, I've heard it told by so many different people, people that have done a great deal of research on it. And the, the one that I'm going to be telling you right now is truly a pared down version. There's not as much detail as you might get elsewhere. If you go look for books by, oh I hope I get this name right. I can't remember his first name. I'll put it on the screen here. Fitzhugh is his last name though. And he has done some fabulous research and done some uh, really good writing on the Bell Witch. It's become really seemingly his obsession. And I, at first I was going to put here um, an old Ghostly Talk radio show where they first discussed the Bell Witch. And it was around an hour long. Entertaining because I'm a part of that group and I love those guys. But I decided that my viewing public would probably rather that I talk about it personally instead of just uh, putting you off onto someone else. This is probably going to be a little bit of a long one so why don't you just kick back and get comfortable and listen and I'm going to get my my cues and guidelines from this book which I've had forever it's really ratty um, it's called Poltergeist a study in destructive destructive haunting I think it's kinda of messed up on the cover by Colin Wilson and it's a wonderful book I used to read this and get so freaked out it doesn't really freak me out anymore it's just interesting this is one I go back and read over and over, but there's a pretty pretty decent section in here about the Bell Witch, and I think this is actually where I first got my true education on the Bell Witch. I'm going to take my cues from this and probably add some of my, my own knowledge to it. In 1817, a farmer named John Bell lived with his family in Robertson County, Tennessee, with his wife Lucy and nine children back before they had TV and YouTube. One of these children, Betsy, was a girl of 12. At first the disturbances were so slight that no one paid much attention. There was knocking and scratching sounds on the walls, which is pretty typical of a poltergeist case. That's usually how it starts. And for those that don't know, poltergeist is German for noisy spirit. Geist meaning ghost. Polter, I guess meaning noisy. So it started with um, knockings and scraping noises and sounds like rats gnawing on the walls. As usual, nothing could be found that could account for any of the noises. They seem to be mostly the kind of noises that would be made by animals. And so didn't really cause a lot of excitement, especially, you know, in 1817 in a farmhouse. You're going to get that kind of stuff. An invisible dog seemed to be clawing on the floor sometimes. And there were sounds of an invisible bird flapping against the ceiling. And a few times even the sound of two chained up dogs viciously fighting with one another. This mainly took place in the middle of the night when all the lamps were turned out. So there would be all this horrible noise in the house and everyone would jump up and light the lamps and start looking around. But it, it tended to just immediately stop as soon as they lit the lamps. And it's been traditional that poltergeists really don't like to be seen doing whatever it is they're doing. 
So, then the entity started pulling the clothes off of the bed, meaning the, the sheets and blankets, and were making kind of odd, more human sounding noises like choking and gulping and gasping sounds, um, like what you might hear with someone who's being strangled. The next thing that started happening is that rocks started being thrown and chairs and things like that, pieces of furniture turned upside down. Slowly the poltergeist began to get into its stride and the girl Betsy seemed to be the main focus of this whole thing. Things only happened when she was around. When the disturbances had been going on for roughly a year, now this is what I found confusing. In this book, it says the girl Betsy slash Elizabeth, or it says the girl Betsy hyphen Elizabeth hyphen seemed to be the main focus of it. And I'm not sure if they're calling Betsy also Elizabeth or if Elizabeth was another one of the children. I would have to go look that up. I think that there were two girls within this age range, and it seems to be that with Poltergeist, it's, it's generally thought that they feed off of the energy of pubescence. Um, you know, all that, like, sexual energy and the confusion, and you get this, like, anger towards your family. and It's all the angst, basically. And in almost any poltergeist case, you will find that within the home, there is a, usually a girl, sometimes a boy, but usually a girl, between the ages of whenever puberty tends to start, and that's, you know, going down constantly. So, in my era... Um, between the ages of 11 and 24, 25. And when you're not in that zone, you just almost don't find any kind of poltergeist activity. And usually if you remove that child from the home, the activity will stop or it will follow the child to wherever it's staying. Um, and it's hotly debated whether poltergeists are uh, like an id monster that the, the young person uh, develops subconsciously or if it's actually a, an elemental that is um, drawn in by the energy that a teenager puts off maybe kind of feeds on it which would be more of what I would actually believe 